video conferencing in. Um, at the end of the presentation this evening, there's going to be the opportunity to answer questions. So please utilize the chat box down on your screen, uh, which will give you the availability to, to send in any questions that you may have uh, while the presentation is going on. Um, uh, we have uh, some folks that are going to gather those questions. Um, my, uh, our guess here is that there will be like questions from various people. We're going to sort of uh, put those together and then uh, we're going to try to answer them in a Q&A session at the very end of things. Um, so at any rate, um, when you use the chat uh, box, you want to be sure that you let us know what town you're in and what your unit number is. That's important for us to be sure and, and, and to be able to track uh, who's come on board and who hasn't, okay? So um, uh, given all of that, uh, oh, I should also mention um, again that this presentation is gonna be available um, afterwards, uh, both I think in, in video conferencing form uh, and in a, 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 a you know kind of a readout of, of everything that uh, we're going to be discussing here tonight. So you know, don't feel as though you have to take notes. But um, so this presentation will be available afterwards, also. Okay. So let's dive in, uh, starting with the agenda. So uh, Justin, could you bring up the next slide, please? Awesome. Terrific. So uh, this is our agenda for this evening. We've got a, 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 a wide range of topics that we're going to cover. Uh, first of all, we're going to be talking about what is on everybody's mind these days, which is the uh, COVID-19 and our policy in regard to that. Um, this, is, this is a very important topic that we want to cover right away. Um, we're going to talk about an extension for our early bird discount. So for those of you who are responsible for sending in uh, and securing your place at camp uh, this summer. Um, that uh, early bird discount has been extended and we'll talk about that. We'll talk a little bit about what happens when you arrive at camp and what happens when you depart. We'll also be speaking uh, about the merit badge schedule. We'll tell you where you can go to find the regular merit badge schedule, which is is online. The, the whole leader's guide is online and available on the council website. And also what's new uh, at both Re uh, Camp Resolute and at Camp Squanto as far as merit badges. Every year we uh, try to uh, develop new merit badges that we haven't done before. And uh, so we have uh, a listing of those for you. Um, every year uh, there are always questions in regard to um, our health and medical forms. And uh, we expect this year will be no, uh, no different. So we have some uh, new and additional information in regard to that. We have some uh, information to give you in regard to uh, what happens if uh, you, one of your scouts has medication that he has to take to camp. So we're gonna talk about our medication policy. Um, we're also gonna be speak about some forms that leaders are required uh, uh, to do. And those are our uh, Cori, Sori's and the, the, the camp um, the, the camp um, uh, BC form, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, we're gonna remind you about pre-camp meetings. As you probably remember, uh, pre-camp meetings are done usually uh, at Camp Resolute the Wednesday before you come to camp, and at Camp Squanto the Monday before you come to camp. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the uh, opportunity for provisional camping. Provisional camping will be available um, uh, during, uh, during camp this summer at both camps. And then what we're gonna do uh, is, uh, and actually this isn't on the agenda, but we're gonna um, have Tyler O'Neill, who is uh, a member of our OA Lodge, speak to you about some uh, OA business and uh, he'll, He'll present that. And then at the very end, we will do a question and answer period. So we'll um, gather up the questions that you have submitted on your chats and uh, um, you know try to answer those. Any questions that for some reason or other we can't answer, um, we'll get on back to you. So that's why it's important 
to give us your troop number in your town. So, um, Justin, if you could uh, give me the next slide here, that would be that would be great. Okay, so we're talking here about, as I said, what is the reason that we're doing this virtually and what is on everybody's uh, mind these days, which is the COVID-19 virus. So we are, um, we are following all, um, we are following all guidelines uh, from national, state, and local health officials in regard to um, in regard to um, the COVID-19 virus. Um, all scouting activities and the operation of our own Mayflower Council camp facilities will um, will be following these guidelines. So we're going to continue to evaluate the ongoing situation, as you can guess. Um, every day brings new information. Uh, this whole situation is fluid, and we want to be sure that everybody is paying uh, attention to the directives that come um, in regard to this uh, from uh, the council office, and uh, we'll be monitoring both national, state, and our local board of health directives. Uh, our our overriding um thing here is that we want to keep all of our scouts all of our leaders safe in this environment so um if you have questions about that let us know but that is our COVID-19 policy if you could uh, switch to the next slide so we want to talk to you about the early bird discount as you know yearly uh folks that are able to register their units for camp and they're able to do that within um, the required time period, uh, the early bird time period, um, they get a bit of a break in terms of the, um, the, uh, the amount that they're paying for camp. So this year, that $25 discount per is gonna be extended to May 31st, 2020. So that's a, that's a 15 day extension from the normal uh, date that we would normally do early bird. Uh, you can see on the screen here the uh, you know what we're what each and every one of our um, our camp facilities are charging, both for the early bird discount and for a regular uh, troop or provisional week, venture or eagle week, the NYLT program or our CIT program. So we want you to uh, know and understand that make sure that you can uh, take advantage of this discount uh, for the early bird discount, once again, extended through May 31st. If you could send the next slide. Every year, uh, both of our camps, uh, both Camp Resolute and Camp Squanto, um, try to take a look through um, working with their program directors and others uh, to find merit badges that may be new, uh, things that haven't been offered at that camp before. And so we have a listing of these here. And, uh, you know, some of these are, are, are great badges to, to work on. So at Resolute, um, the forestry merit badge is going to be offered this year, along with the weather merit badge, game design, and the hiking merit badge. Um, at Camp Squanto, uh, the American culture merit badge is going to be offered the animation merit badge is going to be offered and in our stem area the electricity merit badge is going to be offered uh, now on the screen you've got uh, something in there that says coracle building non-merit badge and you're probably wondering what a coracle is um, for those of you who don't know a coracle is a simple one person craft a boat um, and we're going to try in our uh, uh, our scout craft area to try building these coracles. Um, we've got uh, information on how to do that. We'll provide the materials to do that. And we just think this is gonna be kind of a neat and fun project for people to take. Uh, our intent is once these are built, uh, we're gonna take them down to the waterfront and we're gonna race them. So I think it's a fun activity, it's something new, something different, 
and we hope uh, your scouts enjoy that. Uh, the next uh, slide, please. Great. So, flight to Eagle. So, uh, at Camp Squanto, the Flight to Eagle program is a specialty program that's designed for um, first year campers, essentially. They're younger kids and they focus specifically on rank advancement for 10 to foot second class and first class requirements. Um, they learn scouting skills, they, these are skills to build character, and they emphasize um, citizenship, team, teamwork, uh, leadership, and they have a ton of fun. So that's uh, what that program is all about. Um, that program at Camp Squanto is going to run uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Now, starting at 11 o'clock through noon every day, Flight to Eagle folks are going to be able to choose a merit badge to go along with this program. That's a change from past years. In past years, we have assigned um, a, a merit badge. Uh, traditionally, it's sort of been in the handicraft area. I think last year it was art or something. But this year, um, uh, due to your requests, um, we are gonna open that up. So they have the ability to choose any merit badge during the 11 to 12 o'clock uh, time period to, uh, to meet that requirement. So uh, I think that's gonna be different. It's gonna be fun and um, they can do that. And then the Flight to Eagle folks have an orientation that's held at 645 on Sunday night at the dining hall bell tower. Uh, but more about that as you go to your, um, your uh, pre-leader meetings, uh, either the, uh, on the, the Monday before camp. Uh, so next slide, please. Okay, so this particular topic is one that always elicits uh, a ton of questions. So let's try to go over these. Now, uh, medical forms and medications. So every adult, Every scout must have a completely filled out and doctor signed BSA medical form on file in the health lodge in order to be uh, entered into camp and in order to stay at camp. So let me repeat that one again. Every adult, every scout must have a completely filled out uh, and doctor signed BSA medical form on file. Um, so uh, this is a, a, a requirement from National. Um, we have no wiggle room on this one. The form has to, and I'll repeat that again, has to be signed or the physician has to use his signature stamp on that, um, that uh, form, okay? Now the form is a little bit different this year. Uh, you can find it online. Um, and uh, you, can, you can print it on down. We would suggest that if you have the availability to send that off to your physician's office as soon as you can to kind of, you know, uh, get ahead of the game, that would be a great thing, okay? Um, so all campers are required to have a physical examination within 12 months prior to arriving at camp. Uh, once again, the form has to be completed and signed by a physician, okay? Um, all of their uh, vaccination information needs to be there. The form has to be filled out in its entirety. And the physician must sign the BSA medical form. Uh, we can't allow you to stay in camp unless that form is signed. Now, um, that, you know, if that's a problem, you need to let us know. But um, we're saying that that form definitely has to be signed uh, by uh, the uh, kiddo's uh, physician or by um, your physician if you're a leader coming into camp. Let me talk a little bit about medications also. So, so medications have to be in the original bottle that was distributed um, and ordered by the physician and that the pharmacy has filled. Okay, so what that means is you can't be removing a few pills from the from the bottle and putting them into a plastic bag uh, and send that along with uh, 
um, uh, little Johnny Scout uh, to camp. It has to be in the original bottle, and we we make sure that that medication and that prescription is distributed exactly how the physician intends that to be. And that that information is on, on the label, uh, uh, the prescription label on the bottle. Okay, if there are if there is some change in the prescription for some reason, the physician needs to let us know that. Okay, so they they really need to be able to to uh, make sure that that's the case. We can't uh, we, we can't go, go by a note from mom and dad that says. Um, uh, you know, uh, Johnny is only taking a half of this tablet or whatever. It's as prescribed. Okay. Uh, if there are questions on that, we'll uh, we'll endeavor to answer them during the Q and A session. Okay. Uh, okay. Next slide, please. Uh, a note, a uh, further note about the medical forms. All the medical forms are going to be retained by camp. Now, this is uh, something that we've done in past years. It's been going on for the last several years. Um, we, are, um, we are mandated by the state to keep um, uh, copies of these medical forms. So our suggestion to you is, you guys need to keep the original forms. Take a photocopy of the original form and send that form along with your scout or with your leader, or um, if leaders, if you're collecting all of these, uh, make sure that they're copies, not the originals. Parents should hang on to the, the original copies, send us the photocopies, okay? And once again, uh, there's indication there about the state regulations that cover the storage and dispensing of medications, and they have to come in original containers. They're stored in locked compartments in the health office, and uh, and so forth, and you can see the the information there on the screen. So uh, we we want you to uh, to abide by all of that. And once again, if you have questions in that regard, we'll endeavor to answer them during the Q and A portion. Okay, next slide, please. So leader forms, um, and this is a requirement for all BSA leaders coming into camp. So that's anybody who has any supervisory capacity with your scouts and your troops in camp. So that includes um, the guy that is an assistant scout master that can't stay overnight, but he's coming into camp um, just to visit. Um, it it, it, it uh, applies to those folks. And I know this happens that we have troops where um, uh, leaders, because they can't get a full week off, will switch off with other leaders within your troop. We want to, we want to make sure that each and every leader uh, has to meet these requirements. So that is um, the, uh, want to make sure that you have completed your youth protection training. Um, that youth protection training is something that is, is uh, mandated uh, by our national office. As you know, um, it has to be done. Um, there is a new criminal background check a sorry and something called a camp quarry. And this is different from the regular membership quarry that you guys probably have already sent in. You may have sent it in with your registration uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, this report is done by the Mayflower Council. Uh, the council then authorizes personnel as outlined by the state um, uh, to review these. Uh, so you wanna be aware that all adults all adults serving in any kind of supervisory capacity in camp must have the current YPT, a Camp Corey, and a SORI, even if they're not staying overnight, okay? That's just the rules and regulations uh, that we have to abide by. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so once again, uh, uh, every week during the summer, uh, the week before a unit comes to camp, there is a pre-camp meeting uh, for Camp Resolute. Uh, that meeting is held on Wednesday evening. Uh, you check in at the Camp Resolute camp office, and that meeting starts at 7 p.m. Uh, for Camp Squanto, it is the Monday before you leave for camp. Um, if you wish to come in and uh, enjoy dinner 
with the troops that are in camp at that time. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. It's a 6 p.m. dinner and then a 7 p.m. meeting. And uh, once again, you need to check in at the Squanto office uh, if you're if you're going to do that. Um, so this this inf uh, meeting is really very important. We need to have at least one leader, uh, and hopefully their senior patrol leader, if if at all possible, to come um, the week before you arrive at camp uh, to attend this meeting. So this this is really a program planning kind of thing. We're going to give you some uh, go over information, last minute instructions, things that you need to know to make your your week at camp a successful one. Um, so um, we also would like to tell you that uh, at Camp Squanto that the um, the uh, senior patrol leaders and scoutmasters should attend a gathering of all of our area directors, which is held on the back dining hall porch. Uh, directly after this meeting. That allows you to sign up for, um, uh, you know, uh, afternoon kinds of activities, troop swims, um, uh, uh, game challenges, whatever it is that uh, we're going to have listed as, as uh, additional activities. You can sign up with each area and make sure that you can, um, uh, you, you can schedule yourself for those things. Okay, so it's vital that that uh, all troops have at least one representative uh, for both uh, portions of that uh, planning meeting. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so during the planning session, um, if you haven't been to the planning session uh, the week before camp, this is what you should expect. It's gonna be an explanation of camp and, and troop administrative policies, uh, including how you um, enroll for merit badges, if, uh, if a scout signs up for a merit badge and then decides, ah, gee, you know, maybe I'd like to try something different. Um, that change process is explained. Um, there's gonna be an explanation discussion of the program and advancement opportunities available at camp. And once again, a round robin with our area directors to schedule your troop program for the coming weeks. So um, we wanna be sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to do those kind of extra afternoon kinds of activities uh, so that we can schedule them appropriately. Um, there may be some late breaking program changes, um, but if that's the case, we'll let you know about that. Um, actually, uh, this is a good point for me to actually jump in and let you know that the theme this year at Camp Squanto is going to be, um, it's gonna be a sort of a medieval nights uh, Knights and Dragons, um, that that kind of thing. So uh, start thinking about your um, your gateways. Start thinking about your costume uh, costuming for the George McGee uh, evening that we have every Tuesday, where the theme night is really highlighted. So um, you know, start getting your your night um, stuff ready, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that. So we're looking forward to that. This is Rick. Uh, can you hear me? I can. Um, and at Camp Resolute this summer, the theme is 101, a, a Camp Odyssey. Oh, so uh, for those of you who didn't hear that, but uh, the theme at Camp Resolute is um, 101 because it's the 101st year the Camp uh, Resolute is in uh, in existence here. They celebrated their 100th anniversary last year, but it's 101, a camp odyssey. So um, that sounds like it's going to be a blast too. So I uh, just want to let you uh, folks that are resolute folks uh, know about that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to talk about some other programs and some other opportunities at all of our, uh, our summer camp uh, facilities. So we should let you know that Venture Week uh, is gonna be held at Camp Resolute this year, uh, July 19th through the 24th. Um, this is a five night camping program. It's designed to give uh, ventures um, and scout PSA leadership skills that they can use uh, back in their units and so forth. Uh, this is a great opportunity for our crews to get together and uh, enjoy the camp environment. So uh, once again, Venture Week, 
Camp Resolute, July 19th through the 24th. Uh, NYLT at both Camp Resolute and Camp Squanto at Camp Resolute. That is going to be held uh, towards the end of the season, uh, August 2nd through 7th. And then Camp Squanto, it'll be held um, week one of camp, which is June 28th through July 3rd. Um, so that's a, a, a great program, a great uh, opportunity to gain leadership. Um, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a terrific thing. We would suggest that you can take advantage of that. And lastly, our CIT program at Camp Resolute and Camp Squanto. So CITs, of course, are counselors in training. This is the program that allows us to um, work with young folks, both 14 and 15 years old, and instruct them on how to be excellent camp counselors. Um, they have the availability uh, to work in varying uh, areas of camp week to week. Um, and um, uh, so they get a, a real sense of, of what areas they might like to work at uh, once they become 16 years old and can get paid for doing what they're gonna be doing. So once again, a CIT program, Camp Resolute, Camp Squanto, uh, excellent opportunity for 14 and 15 year old folks to get um, uh, going in terms of camp staff. Okay, uh, Eagle Week. Uh, Eagle Week is gonna be held this year at Camp Resolute. It's gonna be on July 19th through the 24th. This is an excellent opportunity for those folks that are working or need to work on Eagle required badges. Um, there's a whole, um, whole listing of Eagle required badges that are gonna be, be offered during Eagle Week. Um, once again, this is a great opportunity um, you know, and of course, uh, this year, because of, of the COVID virus, we had to, uh, had to postpone or cancel our uh, last week at, of MBU. Uh, so this is an excellent opportunity uh, for those folks that were working on Eagle badges that they need to finish up, uh, sign up for Eagle Week. It, 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 it'll be a great opportunity. Um, Lastly, uh, we wanna talk uh, uh, about troop and provisional camping. Um, uh, of course, we have troop camping that's available um, uh, during the, uh, the weeks at Camp Resolute, which I believe are, are weeks one, two, and three, and then uh, for weeks one through six at Camp Squanto in Plymouth. Um, both of those uh, camps will be offering a provisional camping opportunity. So that means that, that guys that uh, perhaps didn't get an opportunity to go to camp with their unit, um, or they may have gone to camp already, and even though their unit isn't coming back, they'd like to do another week, provisional is the opportunity for them. Um, so uh, they can sign up for that, and um, you, you, can, uh, you can sign up for that provisional camping opportunity. So, uh, a, a great, uh, great uh, thing to be able to do. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about day camp crossover at Camp Resolute. Um, and so could you guys um, switch over to one more? One more, uh, there you go, okay. So crossover campers are at Camp Resolute. This uh, is a program that allows folks to uh, go to the day camp at Camp Bolton, but they're able to cross over, um, go to the other side of the lake and work on merit badges. Um, so there's uh, six weeks of day camp in Bolton. Uh, campers uh, can go for one week or they can go for six weeks, whatever they, 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 they wanna do. Uh, campers entering uh, are usually the sixth through the eighth grade. Um, they can earn up to three merit badges a week um, uh, using this crossover uh, thing. And it, it's really kind of cool. It's, it's a, a, an ideal kind of thing for a scout who's playing catch up or planning to, uh, you know, maybe you're already an Eagle Scout and you want to earn some palms. This is a great opportunity for you to take advantage of. Right. So we're in the crossover, um, uh, crossover camps at Camp Resolute. Okay, I'm gonna interrupt for just a second, Rich. Um, this is at Adventure Day Camp, which is uh, adjacent to uh, the Scout Camp at Resolute. So you actually come in and out of day camp every day 
and literally cross over uh, to Resolute and participate in the in the uh, in the resident summer camp program during the day. Okay, is that a, that's a pretty good explanation? I think. Great. Right. Thanks. Know. Thanks for the additional information, Rick. Uh, next slide. Um, so they once again they uh, for enrollment for this uh, they can select uh, one up to all six weeks. Um, there is optional busing that's available from 17 different communities um, uh, close by to uh, Camp Resolute. And uh, I think the furthest east that goes is, is in Walpole. Um, they do extended day, early drop off, late pickup. Um, there is, um, the cost is $370 a week. There is a $40, $40 early bird discount. Um, and uh, but there isn't a multi-week discount between the resident and day camp programs. So uh, we also want to let you know that the sibling discount, in other words, uh, one you know a brother and sister, uh, two brothers, whatever, and they're you know they're both going. There is a sibling discount uh, that you can apply. So we want to make sure that you know and understand that. Okay. So so for more information about um, about this. Uh, you want to go to www.cubscoutcamps.org or email information uh, info at cubscoutcamps.org. So that's for the Adventure Day Camp crossover folks. Okay. So um, at this time, before we launch into Q&As, and I know our uh, crack team of technical folks uh, and, you know, that, that are in the in the, in the background here have been uh, taking all of your questions and kind of lining them up. I think at this point, uh, our guys uh, behind the scenes have been collating questions. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna uh, do this verbally here. Um, and we wanna, uh, actually, I wanna take this opportunity to, to thank all of you guys that have uh, signed on to do this uh, in a virtual manner. Um, this is the first time that we've tried something uh, like this, uh, this large, and uh, it seems to be going well. So we appreciate your, uh, your help in all of this. So, uh, fellas, if you've got some questions that we can talk about, let's uh, let it roll. Okay, Rich and Rick, uh, this is Mark. We have a whole slew of questions around medical forms, obviously. The big one is cup that's coming up is... Um, the amount of doctor's offices that are currently closed and the possible inability of people to get uh, physicals done in a timely manner before camp. Do we have any eyes on what our policy as a council will be? I, uh, can, I, can I take a crack at that? Yep, go ahead, Rick. I think that... Um, go for it. <laughs> well, I, you know, to say what the answer is going to be on July 1st today, I don't think I can. Um, we've we have been in contact with the National Boy Scouts. Uh, I'm attending yet another one of these uh, with them over the next couple of days to get some guidance on what will be accepted. Um, and I'm also, you know, doing the same thing with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, to find out what kind of accommodations uh, they may be making for this summer. So again. If we can get them done, let's get them done. Um, if it's a matter of getting the form filled out, let's see if we can get those over to our doctor's office, uh, even in the mail with a letter of explanation. Um, I think, you know, those are all things we can do. And those are answers that we know. We don't know what other accommodations, who would have thought that we would be doing virtual learning, um, you know, for a month or two. Uh, I think we have to kind of play it a little bit. Um, you know, our responsibility will be to uh, be sure that we keep you folks informed uh, as much as we can and any policy changes that we're given. As of right now, no one has addressed uh, these kind of things for summer camps yet. And uh, the Boy Scouts are trying to find out what we can and cannot do. They carefully make that form so that it meets the requirements in every state. Um, so I think that's, uh, you know, 
that's one particular part of it. I am also very concerned with what the state of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, is going to ask us to do uh, for this summer. Okay, on that um, same line of co uh, questioning, if a physical was done in July of 2019, is it still good this year? It's, it's generally a year. Yeah. And then resign. Okay. It doesn't have to be another physical. It just, the reason that, you know, the reason that the form needs to be signed by the doctor is really not just uh, to verify the medical information. But it also, there's a question in there that's asking of the doctor, is this young person up to going to camp and should there be any restrictions on them while they're there? So that we'll know, and you'll know as leaders, what that scout can or cannot do while he's there or she's there. Are photocopies of the original form allowed to be turned in at camp? Yes, we would. As a matter of fact, we would suggest that that be the case, that uh, th that you guys keep the originals, keep the originals. You guys bring us photocopies of the entire form, uh, part A, part B. I think there's a, a two sections of part B and then part C. So the entire form should be photocopied. You give us the copy. You keep the original. Okay, and, and does that answer also, um, we have a question about wet ink required on A, B, and C? We will, we will accept either a wet signature, somebody who's actually signed this by hand with a pen, or the physician stamped signature. Those are the two signatures that we will, we will allow. And uh, just to be clear, no longer are we allowing doctor offices, doctors' offices, to send in their pre-created um, camp form. That is crystal clear. No, yes. no camp forms are no longer good. They can they send that they, need, they need to send in our camp form. Yep. Yeah. If a parent okay. gets that, uh, form, go ahead. The parent gets the form from the doctor, the camp form. They can put the information on our form, on the BSA form, and then have the doctor sign that and also sign the part where it says that he understands, the doctor understands that this young person is going to camp and they're going to be doing different things than they normally do. And are there any restrictions? And that's, I mean, that's pretty clear on the medical form. If you have any other questions on that, this has all been pretty heavily uh, talked about in the back of the uh, camp guide. So if you download the 2020 camp guide uh, and practically the last quarter of the book is, uh, is based on these questions. Okay, the next um, series of questions revolves around Corey and Sori. Um, where can they get the forms? Uh, I believe it's at the Mayflower Camp site, uh, Mayflower BSA site. And uh, we have a specific question. They have about 10 or, 10 or 12 parents cycling in and out during the week because neither the scoutmaster nor the assistant can stay the whole week. Mm -hmm. uh, do all of them, all will have yes. Corey and up to date with YPT, but they're not necessarily registered with the troop. Is that okay? Yes. Everybody who is coming and is in any kind of supervisory capacity, watching over the scouts and their troop, need, and they're an adult, they need to have all of those forms signed. They need to have YPT completed. And they need to be registered with their troop. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, um, Corey and Story are available at the, the, the site. Um, Rick, we can't see. hear you. Sorry, Corey and Story forms are available at the site, at, at the Mayflower BSA site. Yes, in the comment, in the, uh, in the uh, chat section, several people have actually sent the link. Uh, if you want to grab it right away, it's there. Um, and then page two. You Yes, I want to be crystal clear. You need to be a registered member of the Boy Scouts of America, adult application, 18 and older. 
to be at camp, staying over, acting as a leader, whatever. Yes, they need to be a leader, registered leader. So you don't, uh, uh, a leftover 18 year old from three summers ago uh, who would like to spend a week at camp doesn't qualify unless he or she is a registered leader with the Boy Scouts. Uh, I, I hope that's pretty clear. Somebody uh, just had a, had a question about the, if you're a registered merit badge counselor, does that count? And what I should say is that the if you're a merit badge counselor, you should be a registered scouter. And you, if that's the case, you're registered with somebody. You're I, registered with the- Are you coming there as a merit badge counselor and you're staying over and you're in charge of those kids overnight, you need to be a registered leader. If you're coming in and out during the day, I can work with you as a merit badge counselor. But if you're going to be there, you need to be registered leader in the Boy Scouts of America, Corey, sorry, YPT. Okay, a couple of questions around the Monday meeting. Uh, first, um, tro troop activities, can they be presented or pushed out to the Scoutmasters and the SPLs prior to camp so the SPLs can discuss it with their patrol leaders? Uh, two, can, is it possible to participate in that meeting from a distance? And three, um, in the past, uh, somebody has been reviewing medical forms after the Monday meeting to say if they're okay or not. Are we gonna be offering that again? Okay, so I've got uh, a question about your question. So, so first of all, we would, you know, like very much, to have a representative from each and every troop attend the meeting and attend the, the get together with the area directors afterwards. I understand there may be some folks that have to travel quite a bit. We have out of state um, uh, troops that uh, come in. Um, they may not be able to uh, get to those meetings in a, uh, you know, in a, in a, a quick fashion. So um, we can work with you in regard to the information that you're gonna need to know and um, you know, any of the information about uh, activities. Um, one, of the, one of the other reasons that we want to have folks attend is we wanna be sure, first of all, you're still coming. And uh, second of all, if you can give us a sense and account uh, using um, a listing of your scouts about how many of your uh, scouts are going to be in camp. So um, we can work with you um, virtually or otherwise uh, if you're like out of state or you've got a long way to travel. But if you can do it at all, please come to those meetings. Um, so YPT, will we be offering it during camp again? Yes, I've had some discussion with the training committee in this regard. Um, they would like very much to be able to utilize um, some of the time that, that is uh, right after the Scoutmasters meeting um, uh, each and every day uh, to, um, uh, to offer YPT at camp. Um, I don't know, I know that's at Squanto, I don't know the availability at Resolute, uh, but I would hope that they may be able to offer something of a similar nature if they're, uh, if, uh, for the leaders that are going to Resolute. So yes, uh, we're working with the training committee to offer that. Okay, um, let's see. I have a, uh, there was a question about Flight to Eagle. Uh, do they go back to Flight to Eagle in the afternoon? Um, Flight to Eagle ends at 11 a.m., correct? Yeah, so, yeah, so Flight to Eagle, uh, the, the actual Flight to Eagle classroom, so to speak, uh, though they're all over camp, frankly. Uh, that goes from nine o'clock in the morning uh, after breakfast to 11 o'clock. And then they have a choice of whichever merit badge is being offered during the 11 to 12 o'clock time slot. Uh, but in the afternoon, they don't go back to Flight to Eagle. Uh, the, the program ends then um, at lunchtime and uh, they have the availability to do afternoon things. If they want to take another merit badge, if they wanted to, if they want to, um, uh, 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 work 
uh, with uh, leaders in their campsite to do projects, whatever. Uh, if they want to um, work for uh, camp uh, camp uh, improvement projects, would love them to be able to do that. Or if they want to um, participate in afternoon and evening activities, um, you know, uh, that's that's what we want them to do. But the the actual flight to Eagle thing goes from nine to eleven, and then the merit badge from eleven to twelve. So just to be clear about um, one thing that, that has been asked about 18 ways from Tuesday, I want to make sure, sure we say this out loud. Any adults in camp need to be registered and have Corey and Sori forms done. If you are staying with your troop and you're, you're in a supervisory capacity, or if you're a member uh, of your troop, um, yes, those forms have to be filled out absolutely if they are not filled out we won't be able to allow you to enter camp okay um so is there are we going to have the opportunity for a pre-camp swim test we hope we've, we've talked about this uh and we hope that we may be able to offer some time um, uh, prior to camp, uh, perhaps a Saturday before camp opens, to be able to um, allow troops that want to do the swim test um, on their own and uh, get that over and done with so that uh, on the day that they arrive, they don't have to go through that process. Um, we're going to be talking with our waterfront director and her staff um and uh we're going to see if we can get that done uh so more information to come on that once we get a uh you know a a, a solid date and uh and uh we'll get that information on out to you oh and and um, i should there, there may be there may be folks and tony walsh if you're listening i know that you may have uh, asked this question uh if there are out of state uh, folks that are doing swim tests it has to be done in a like body of water. So in other words, a pond uh, similar or of a similar nature to, to, to Fawn Pond at Squanto. Um, and we have to have some information about who is certifying the scouts in terms of, of their swimming ability. So if there's somebody there that is a you know Red Cross certified lifeguard uh, and we can get that information about who is certifying uh, and you bring that all with you with the certifications of your kids, uh, you, you, we, we can work that too. It has to be, however, in a like body of water. Can't be in a municipal swimming pool. Uh, it can't be in your backyard pool. It has to be a like body of water. Couple of questions about merit badges. Um, when will merit badge sign up be open and is it first come first serve? It is, and uh, when you sign up a scout for summer camp, is that when you sign up their, their for merit badges? My my understanding is is that uh, registration for troops to come to camp is open now, of course, um, and that merit badge um, uh, uh, sign up, sign up for merit badge is also available on, online now. Um, we try to accommodate everybody that wants to take a merit badge. There are sometimes, however, uh, given the merit badges and the number of people that want to take that merit badge, we have to limit the size of the class. I mean, you know, for instance, I can't have 50 people taking the cooking merit badge at the same time. It just doesn't work. But we try to accommodate those that, um, uh, you know, that sign on um, there's usually a uh, sort of a maximum number of scouts per merit badge. We make some exceptions for that. And especially for those guys that are working towards their eagle, um, if, you're, if you've got a, a merit badge that, that you know, wow, it, it's the only place I can get this and I need to do this and it's required for eagle, we'll work like heck to be sure that you get into the class. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. Has our um, induction person left? Tyler, are you still here? Okay, well, um, 
I don't know the answers off the top of my head, but we'll get them. Can a troop do an election with less than 50% and is it Tantamus Lodge only? Um, I, my, my understanding is of the rules and I could be wrong on this one. Um, is, is John Houlihan on? Yeah, so so his, uh, so his Mr. Houlihan is letting us know uh, that it is Tantamus only. We can't give inductions uh, for uh, for troops outside, and it has to be fifty percent. Um, they yeah. the, the, the lodges outside are certainly welcome to attend our ceremonies and so forth. But um, my understanding is that they're they're doing uh, the inductions for Tantamus only. John was on. Mail the Corey story into council by a certain date, or can they just bring them with them when they arrive? The Monday before. Monday before. Bring, bring them on, on the, on the, the Monday pre camp meeting or the Wednesday pre camp meeting. Okay. They can send them as soon as they want, but it would be, you know, that would be helpful. But at the latest, the week before. Okay. So, um, there's a couple of questions for people who arrived a little bit late or maybe missed it. All the financial information about cost and discounts and Provo costs are at the beginning of the slideshow, which will be available on the website uh, shortly. It is. It is yeah, it's also available in the leader's guide that is also online through the council website. Right. The only thing left uh, to be completely that we can handle tonight is... Um, are we going to, uh, for somebody participating from a distance, maybe one of the New York troop or perhaps the Texas troop, how to participate from distance on a Monday meeting? Uh, can we do a conference call in for that, do you think? Yeah, we, we can try to, we'll work with you. If you're, if I know we've got folks that are, are, are coming from Texas, from New York, from Connecticut, from Connecticut, we can work. Uh, with you and even some some folks that are coming from distant parts of our state. Um, so yeah, we we can we can work with you, but if at all possible, please attend in person. Okay, and we will try to publish a list of troop activities prior to the Monday meeting for the SPLs. Yeah, what I can what I can yeah we can do that. But what I can tell you is that there are some ideas. Um, there are some ideas of what those uh, those activities are that's actually listed already in the leader's guide. Um, sort of in the back of the guide, uh, there is information about, you know, um, uh, water polo and, uh, you know, um, uh, gaga ball and all of these other kinds of activities, um, whether they're uh, individual troop activities or whether they're kind of challenge activities, you know, um, one troop wants to challenge another to uh, a volleyball game or whatever. There's uh, there's opportunity to do all of those kinds of things and discuss it at, at that time. And we are not, uh, well, one question somebody wanted to know, and I think I asked this earlier, but I probably didn't make it clear. Somebody wanted to know if we were offering to review medical forms after the pre-meeting, uh, after the- If they, if they have, medical forms that are signed and complete and they want to bring them with them to the pre-camp meeting we'll take them will we review them and tell them if they're good um we'll review them uh it may not be right then and there but we will review them get back to them in case there's any other issues that might arise okay and the last question and actually ironically was the very first question asked um, I just didn't scroll up high enough. So there was a registration fee increase this year. Rick? I'm sorry? <laughs> there was a registration fee increase this year. Did, did anybody else hear Mark or is it just me? Yeah. Was there a registration fee increase this year? Yes. Okay, that is the sum of the questions we were asked. Um, and okay, by so, oh, I actually, I, I I saw one scroll across, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this particular one. No, so they just there, showed up. Yep. Yeah. So there was a question in regard to camp patches. Yes, indeed, there is going to be camp patches. 
we understand that last year there uh, there was a bit of a, a kerfuffle in terms of camp patches, and uh, those folks uh, didn't get their patches uh, nearly uh, early enough in the season. So um, the uh, the camp patches already designed. We're working on getting that done. And uh, week one camp patches will be available and they will be in the trading post. So want to let you know about that. We're going to continue the, um, you're going to be continuing the uh, tradition that we've had of using various areas around camp for Camp Squanto for the camp patches. And uh, uh, what will be on the camp patch this year is going to be uh, an outline of the new um, camp um, uh, uh, cabins that are going up, the new um, uh, winterized camp cabins. That uh, there are three of them that are currently under um, under uh, uh, you know construction at camp uh, as we speak. So um, that's going to be what is going to be on the front of the patch, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, to doing that. Okay, one uh, question that keeps coming up, um, and I, I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, do we have a decision date as to whether or not camp will be a go or a no-go? And um, what is our refund policy going to be? Do we know? Okay, so Rick, I'm going to shoot that one to you. I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hopefully there's a bunch of smiles on that one. You know, we have every intention if we're allowed to, to open camp uh, and to have a summer camp program uh, for everyone who wants to go. Uh, I would think that with the present state of things, uh, we may be told that, you know, by the state or by the Boy Scouts or, you know, by the local Board of Health in Plymouth that we're not having summer camp, at which point we will process refunds. Okay, and uh, is there going to be an online trading post? We have met with um, the folks from Bulldogs, and they are putting together with us um, an apparel uh, trading post uh, that will be available before camp. Um, the most economical way to do that is for the leadership to uh, download uh, an order form and get everyone to put their order together and send it in and pick it up at camp. That's the best way. Um, there's also the ability uh, for troops to be able to order uh, their summer camp t-shirts uh, customized through the same company and pick them up at camp. Um, so that, but there is also the ability to be able to go on and order yourself a sweatshirt or a fleece vest, uh, either staff or traditional campers, and uh, and get those, you know, delivered to your home at at a, at a cost. Okay, and uh, another question: Will the new shower house be complete in time for camp? Um, if you give me like two minutes while we're talking, I will send you. I will send. Uh, Justin, a photograph, and he can put it up in that little box on the side. Um, but right now, the shower house is a foundation with rough plumbing and a giant circus tent, uh, and they are they are they are building as we speak. Well, probably not now, but at the beginning of this call, when it was still bright out, they were working. Um, and uh, just to clarify again, will you accept a digital signature from the physician? As long as it goes on that form. No, I'm getting no. a no. It has to be physically on the form. Either a stamp or his signature. Um, and last but not least, where do you sign up for merit badges online? I believe it's through Double Knot. Am I correct, Rick? Yes, and it's also in the leader's guide. There's a step-by-step -step instruction. In the, the 2020 camp guide, there's a step-by-step -step instruction and a frequently asked questions in the back that has that in it. All right, folks, that looks like uh, we answered just about everything that was thrown at us. If you have, if you have additional questions, if you, um, you know, you, you, you go to bed tonight and all of a sudden uh, somewhere in the middle of the night, you wake up and say, ah, here's a question I needed to ask. 
uh, please send that uh, in to um, the, uh, the email address. Um, I think it's uh, squanto director at, um, uh, 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 was it? Mayflowerbsa.org. Uh, Mayflower yeah, yeah, mayflowerbsa.org. Uh, send that in and we'll get an answer on back to you. Hi, yes, the um, we're, we're gonna, there'll be recordings of this and a copy of the chats with some answers. Okay, and someone's asking that question right now. So, okay, and one last question. When will the CIT application applicants be notified? As far as I know, they have all gotten the job. It's just a matter of they have to process through their their uh, paperwork. Right. Well, we, we actually have not sent out the um, acceptance and seasonal agreements yet for the staff because um, we were waiting for verbiage from uh, folks as far as how we deal with the virus going forward. Um, and people being able to work out. Th there was some language that needed to be adjusted within the last two weeks. So where we are trying to do, deal with that and it'll be going out, uh, the old, the onboarding process for the staff and for the uh, CITs is, is